Hey, everybody, it's Lon Seibin. We are back here at CES 2023. This is a video completely about my visit to the Lenovo suite here. There is a ton of new products to check out. So without further ado, let's see what they've got in this room for us to look at. All right, so we're going to check out some of the new ThinkPad products here. The first one is not a ThinkPad, but a Think Center. This is their mini PC, the Neo 50Q G4. And this is a very compact but nicely performing mini PC from Lenovo. I'll have my friend here just lift up the uh, unit here and spin it around so we can get a look at the ports here. I don't see Thunderbolt on this one, but these are typically used in enterprise environments where you need a uh, quick and easy PC that is powerful enough for most tasks. And you can see they even got the VGA port on that one. They also have some new ThinkPads, and this is the X1 Yoga Gen 8. So this is their two-in-one, and these are all nice and slim here with uh, some OLED display options now and, of course, the new Intel processors. Up here is the X1 Carbon Gen 11. I know a lot of you love the X1 Carbon line. Not too much different from prior years, but it'll have updated displays and processors, and we'll probably get one of these in at some point to review. And this is the X1 Nano Gen 3. This is a very portable ThinkPad. It is running uh, at only about 2.13 pounds. It won't take up too much room in your bag. And it has up to a 2K display option. Now, a couple of viewers wrote in asking me to check out some mini LED monitors, and I found one here. This is the ThinkVision Mini LED P32PZ30. And this is designed for uh, content creators who are looking for um, brightness and color accuracy. It looks really, really nice. This is a uh, 4K display, 31.5 inches, and it runs at 1,200 nits of peak brightness when you're running in an HDR mode. So super bright. It'll be good for uh, HDR movies where you'll actually be able to enable HDR without a lot of dimming. And one thing that we noticed on some other displays is that it's hard to see because their peak brightness doesn't get to the point that you need it to for good HDR. And this one uh, looks like it will do that. It does support HLG and HDR10. I don't believe, though, it supports Dolby Vision. Now, this is also a full-on docking station, so you do have uh, some ports here on the bottom, including Ethernet and a few extra USB ports. So you can connect your laptop here with a single cable, get it powered, and make use of the display and all of the ports on it. So here is the ThinkBook area. We look at a lot of these on the channel. This is their performance model, the 16P Gen 4. And if you're looking for gaming laptop performance and something that doesn't look as much of a gaming device, this might be worth looking at. It's got a nice big trackpad here, a beautiful display with a lot of different display options to choose from, as these laptops typically offer. And one thing that I thought was really neat about this, though, are these modules that you can add on. So it's got a great webcam here. But let's say you wanted to go for the gusto and get some 4K action going on for your live stream. It just snaps on the top there. And what's cool is that you can spin it around, too. So if you were doing a web conference with a bunch of people, you can include them in your stream just by flipping the camera around and then still be able to use the camera on the front. So a neat idea for live streamers. And they've got some other things that plug into the back there. So let's say you're doing your, your little Zoom call and you're not looking so good. Put a light on. And if you tap the side of it, you can turn it on. It's got three different brightness levels. LED, it's got a nice warm uh, look to it, so it should pair nicely with the camera. You'll look your best. Pretty cool there. And then if you are on the road and you want to save some ports for connecting up a hotspot, this is a little hotspot that you can connect up to hook up to a cellular network. So a lot of cool ideas here, practical ones for the new uh, Pro model here in the ThinkBook line. Now, this one is really cool. So a couple of years ago, we reviewed their uh, ThinkBook device that had a, an e-ink display on it. And the way this used to work was the e-ink display was on the back, and you could do stuff with it when it was folded up. This one now has a twist, literally. <laughs> and my friend here is going to twist the display for us. And what you can do now is actually use the e-ink display as your main display, or switch back to the traditional display, which on this one is an OLED. So you can get your beautiful display for doing some video work or whatever, but if you want to save battery for doing some web work or whatever, you can flip it back around. And the e-ink display, go ahead and flip it around for us again there, uh, can become your main display and save a ton of battery life. It doesn't refresh as quickly as the OLED display will refresh, but 
uh, you'll be able to get your work done and uh, save some battery life if you're working on an email or a web document or something. So really cool. They've been sticking with this uh, e-ink design and finding more practical uses for it. And I'm eager to check this out to see how well it performs. Now, they always have some really cool peripheral items, and this one is really neat. This is a lamp, but it's a lot more than that. So in addition to getting a nice desk lamp or an, a webcam uh, light, you also get the webcam, too, on here. And this little webcam can spin around. It's got a little privacy protector on it as well. And you can also pop it off one side and stick it to the other. And you can also run it in vertical mode or, or horizontal mode if you want. So if you've got your TikTok video going on, you can do that. I think for vertical mode, it probably makes more sense on the other side there, but you got the idea. And it can spin around. So for your next deposition, you've got that or interrogation, pretty handy. Uh, you have a Qi charger here at the bottom, which pops out. So when you are at the desk, you can pop your phone on that and charge it up on that little thing that pops out there. And they've got a nice little capacitive dial for adjusting the intensity of the lamp. And in addition to all of that, this is also a little dock, which gives you a few ports in the back, too. Now, you all know I love Chromebooks. And here's another one, the IdeaPad Flex 3i. This has an Intel N200 processor. It's got a 64 gig and 128 gig configuration. So if you're doing some Linux on your Chrome OS device, you can get that done here, I think, with at least a good amount of storage there. It's got a up to 1080p camera here at the top, and it's pretty compact with a 12-inch display. We'll try to get one of these things in and give it a closer look in a few months. Now, a lot of you have been writing in wondering, what's going on with Android tablets? Why don't we hear anything new and exciting? Well, this one is definitely something new and exciting, especially if you're looking for something powerful. This is the Lenovo Tab Extreme, and it is running with a MediaTek Dimensity 9000 octa-core processor, 14 and a half inch OLED display on this one, 12 gigs of RAM, a bunch of storage options that'll go up to one terabyte based on the market that you're in. And you can see right now, it's kind of docked in a keyboard trackpad dock here, but we can detach it and use it in a few other ways. So we can pop the pen off there. This is a kickstand that is on the back and you can use it and take it off if you want. And it not only will orient itself this way, but you can also orient it vertically and then use it as a secondary display with a Windows PC. And they have an app that they use to uh, help facilitate that. Pretty thin here, as you can see. Eight speakers on this one, Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision, so you can do all of your music and everything else like that. And if we flip around to the back, it looks pretty nice on the back, actually. And you've got this surface here where you can dock the pen to charge it up. you got two cameras back there. And the folio here is pretty nice to carry around with you, too. So a really nice design. And one of the things they told me uh, during a briefing a few minutes ago is that the keyboard is very rigid, so it should work really well on a lap because you don't have like a hinge that you have to keep balanced. So pretty nice uh, all-in-one here that is running Android and should be able to do uh, productivity along with entertainment quite well. Now here's another neat device. This is the Lenovo Smart Paper and this looks like your standard e-reader with a nice e-ink display here, but this is a note-taking first device. So right now we've got it in book mode, but we can easily jump out into a notebook mode here and we looked at the Amazon Kindle Scribe recently, which was a similar kind of device for note taking and whatever, but the synchronization of the notes was kind of hard to work with. This one uh, is designed for note takers who are using pen and paper currently and are looking for something digital that still has that paper feel. And what's nice about this is that they have much better note synchronization options that supports iOS, Android, and Windows. So you have the ability to use your notes in other places and keep things synced up between devices. So it does ebook reading as well, but I think the uh, core idea here is to get a nice uh, long duration uh, note taking device here with a paper like display. And I'm eager to check out this one in more detail soon too. And one of the neat things about Lenovo is that they're always experimenting with new ideas. And this is a dual screen, two in one. So typically we see a keyboard and a trackpad down here, but now there is another display. And you can use this in a whole bunch of different ways. I'm going to have my friend here help me out. So you can uh, call up a keyboard here and use an on-screen keyboard, and you also get a trackpad underneath it. But it also comes with a 
Bluetooth keyboard that can work wirelessly, or you can dock it to the device here and type and have your trackpad down below. You can switch the orientation and have some widgets appear on the lower part of the display here. And in addition to that, you can make use of both displays simultaneously with things that you're working on with your computer. So you can go uh, portrait here, and you can also go landscape. You can have windows work on the top and some on the bottom, or you can actually do a uh, waterfall mode if you want and have, for example, a web page take up uh, both displays here. So a lot of different ways to use it based on what your particular use case might be. And it's kind of a neat concept here to have uh, something like this that might be useful for some folks. Now this is the Yoga All-in-One 9i. This is a 32-inch all-in-one PC. And it may look like the base is large here, but it's not because that lower portion there is just a little lazy Susan they're using to more quickly move it around. So really the base of the computer is just that uh, little circle there at the top. And this is running with, of course, Intel processors and NVIDIA uh, GeForce GPUs, and there will be a bunch of different configuration options available. But it looks nice, right? If you're looking for something that uh, looks attractive, running Windows with a little bit of horsepower, this is an option there for you. Uh, you do have an HDMI here. This will work as a secondary display for another computer if you want it to, in addition to being a computer itself. And of course, you've got some Thunderbolt back there too uh, for connecting other peripherals. So pretty nice all-in-one here that is very minimal, but pretty powerful. For the display, again, uh, 32 inches, basically 31.5, according to the specs here, 4K IPS and it runs up to HDR 600. Now Lenovo's doing a refresh, of course, of their Legion gaming line, and we'll start here with their Pro 7i. This is the top of the line device, and of course there are a number of configuration options, but they will include the 13th generation Intel chips along with the 4000 series NVIDIA GPUs. Still has that 16 inch, 16 by 10 display on board. A bunch of different options for refresh rate on these. You got your Thunderbolt. What I thought was really cool though is they've got this new light they added here, which is dying to be turned into a Knight Rider swooshing thing, isn't it? Now, I know many of you watching like to build your own PCs, but sometimes it's nice just to get something out of the box and turn it on. And Lenovo's been making desktop computers for a while now. This is their Legion Tower 7i. Very clean design here, as you can see. Now, this one has a 3080 inside of it, but the 4000 series GPUs will be available. And of course, you're running with uh, all the latest Intel processors on this. Really attractive, a lot of new uh, lighting options here for it. They improved the airflow with uh, the fans here in the front. You've got a nice selection of ports here on the top. And like I said, sometimes it's easier just to buy one. And if you're in that market, this is something definitely to consider. And they also have a smaller unit here. This is the uh, 5i tower. And this, of course, is available with a number of different configuration options too. So if you're looking for something a little more compact and portable, this is another option for you. Now, if you're looking to run at super high frame rates and you have the PC that can do it, this is a monitor for you. This is the 1440p Legion Y27QF30. This is an IPS display that can run at up to 240 hertz, and it will do 250 overclocked. It supports AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync. And again, really geared towards high frame rate gaming at a 1440p resolution. Now, this is a new Motorola phone called the Think Phone. And if you look on the side here, it's got a red button, very similar to the red track point on the ThinkPad. And this is kind of geared more towards the enterprise environment where you've got a bunch of these ThinkPads deployed and this phone can be very easily deployed along with them. And what's kind of cool about the integration here is that there's some software that runs on the ThinkPad and if my friend here hits the button and pulls up a special menu here, you can toss apps from the phone to the computer. So for example, the calendar here just popped up on the PC from the phone. And there's other functions that can be programmed into that button so that uh, you can have your workers work more efficiently with their laptop and computer together. And they have some configurations here and some options that you can use. And of course, the way the button works is that there's single tap options, double tap options. So you can get a lot out of the button, even though there's only a single button there based on the gestures that you do. Now, we're hearing a lot about phones not coming with power adapters any longer. This one comes with a monster adapter, 68 watts, which can power your ThinkPad and also charge the phone very quickly. 
And what I have my friend do here is another little integration option is that if we take a picture of that power adapter real quick, uh, what it will do is uh, assume that we may want to do something with that photo on our computer. So a little message just popped up there and we're going to pull up this Google document and he's just going to click the paste key command on his ThinkPad and look at that goes right in so you don't even have to send the photo anywhere it just assumes you're going to want that on the computer and it passes it along so these are the kind of integrations that they're uh, trying to introduce with this phone and ThinkPad combo so a lot of cool stuff here from Lenovo and we will certainly try to get a lot of this stuff in for review so we can look at it in more detail but it's always great to come out to these uh, product events just to get a feel for what's new and it's kind of fun to see a lot of new concepts here that are being experimented with and one of the things that a lot of you wrote to me about before I came here was that you felt things were getting kind of stagnant and they are still trying to come up with a lot of different things to do with traditional laptops and tablets so lots of cool stuff here to look forward to and until next time this is Lon Seipen thanks for watching this channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters including gold level supporters Brian Parker Chris Allegretta Hot Sauce and Video Games Logic AGR Tom Albrecht and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.